Hey guys, Kyle Millen here with Stillen. And today we're gonna to do a deep dive into the true cold air intake system for the 2024 Toyota Tacoma 2.4 liter turbo four cylinder. We are very excited to talk about all the new and innovative ideas that we've come up with for this new cold air intake system. This is an absolutely fantastic truck and one that we've enjoyed developing parts for. We now have tested on three different uh, Tacomas. One of them was the lower model with the 228 factory horsepower. And we've also tested the SR5 Plus models uh, with the non-hybrid platforms. From the factory, these trucks produce anywhere from 228 to 278 horsepower, depending on their drivetrain configuration. For the purposes of our video, we were testing on an SR5 high output, non-hybrid platform. This is an absolutely fantastic truck and one that we think is gonna be the majority of what you guys own. And therefore we wanted to make this the test bed for all of the products that we produce for you. So what you can see here on the table in front of me is the factory intake system, along with just a few of the prototypes that we've developed for this truck. We now have well over a hundred dyno poles. We've learned a lot and we're ready to share it with you. So like I say, the purpose of this video is only to talk about the air box. We're not even gonna get into the intake tube or anything else that we have cooked up for this fantastic truck. So bear with me, I'm gonna get these out of the way and then we're gonna get right into the air boxes. Here is the factory air box for this truck. The air comes in through the grill right here, right behind the grill shutters, comes in through this little grill up underneath the uh, hood, or I'm sorry, over the, um, Front core support in between the hood, it's all sealed up on the hood there. Makes a 90 degree bend down, goes down, makes a 90 degree bend and comes up again, really working the air a lot. You've got a 90 degree coming in, 90 degree going down, 90 degree coming back up. Every time you bend the air, every time you work the air, you're increasing turbulence, you're increasing air temperature, and you're also reducing the velocity of the air. Every bend that the air has to make reduces velocity. So what we want to do is we want to streamline that airflow as much as possible. So I'm going to get rid of the factory air box and bring in ours. So here are uh, just, here's one sample of the air box that we tested along with a couple of different inlets that we tested as well. Basically, what we've ended up with is a design that's similar to factory in the sense that we're gonna pick up the same intake path coming up over the core support going into the airbox. However, we're gonna be going directly into the airbox, directly into our air filter. Uh, we're not gonna make the air work uh, extra and build in heat, build in turbulence, and build in restriction. We're not gonna do any of that. We're just gonna bring in more of a direct shot. This is very similar to what we've done with the uh, 2018 to, I'm sorry, the 2014 to 2021 Toyota Tundra 5.7 liter V8s. Uh, we've done this same sort of an air path on the Chevy Silverado. We have it on the new 2022 and up uh, Tundra. So we have a lot of experience bringing air from the front of the grill up over the core support, through the core support, wherever we need to route it and into the air box. What we find when we do this is we eliminate a lot of restriction. We really open up that intake path and let that engine breathe, but we also get the coolest possible air charge. The air coming from the front of your vehicle is going to be the freshest air that you can possibly provide for your vehicle. A lot of vehicles from the factory have an opening that goes in through the fender well, pulls air from behind the headlight up in that fender opening, works very well, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but that's always gonna be a few degrees higher than ambient, just because it is having uh, to go through that work of working its way through those uh, paths. Um, plus you are getting a little bit of that uh, residual heat coming from the engine bay. With the Toyota design coming up over the uh, core support, coming from the grill, it's a great design, one we're very familiar with, um, but we wanted to optimize it and let it just breathe better. So our opening is substantially larger than factory. Our opening going into the air box is, I wanna say about 30 to 40% larger than factory. I forget the exact numbers right now, uh, but it's a significant improvement on the actual airflow path, allowing for a larger volume of air. Now let's talk about why that's so important. So before we get into the dynos, I wanna give you a, a quick an, um, explanation of exactly what we did, what our parameters were, why we did things the way that we did them, uh, so that you understand that our data comes from as much repeatability as we can get, 
Um, it comes from a place of trying to have the most accurate and consistent data. So first and foremost, all of our testing was conducted on 91 octane fuel. That's something that's actually very important for these trucks. Uh, we're gonna do a later video uh, going into the details of what we found with the importance of 91 octane fuel, but we saw a significant drop in power when we ran lower octane fuels. So for a baseline testing, all of our testing was done with 91 octane. We ran the testing with the hood both open and closed. Being that the intake seals on the hood, we wanted to test that theory and we wanted to see how much of a difference that would make. So we ran uh, all of our testing with the hood open and closed. For the purposes of our conversation today about the airbox, we're gonna talk about all of the testing being done with the hood closed. We didn't see a um, major difference with the hood being open and closed. Uh, there were a few runs that we call flyers that uh, with the hood open, they produced more power. Um, so that kind of led us down a, a path that I'll get into later in this video. Um, but we did think that the additional airflow of the hood being open uh, would uh, potentially give us more power. So like I say, I'll get into that more detail later on. Um, but we did all the testing, hood open, hood closed, 91 octane fuel. Uh, it was 75 degree day on all of our testing, um, you know, give, give or take a couple of degrees based on time of the day, but average was about 75 degrees. So with that being said, our baseline horsepower numbers uh, were very consistent. And actually I should, I should repeat as well, all of our uh, results, we would average across four runs. So we did four runs for, for everything, and we made sure that we got four consistent runs. So with that being said, um, let's get to the numbers, right? The numbers are gonna speak for themselves. Like I say, German's gonna put a little overlay here on the video for us uh, so you can see the exact dynos. I'm gonna work off my little cheat sheet here. During our testing, we found that the peak horsepower was 215 horsepower and 250 foot-pounds of torque. With the Stillen sealed airbox, we saw gains up to 239 peak horsepower, 281 foot-pounds of torque, which is an overall gain of 24 horsepower and 30 pounds of torque at the rear wheels. The Stillen cold air intake provides major gains through the entire power band. At 3,500 RPM, we see a gain of 14 horsepower and 20 foot-pounds of torque. At 4,000 RPM, we see a gain of 20 horsepower and 25 foot-pounds of torque. And at 4,500 RPM, we see a gain of 22 horsepower and 26 foot-pounds of torque, leading up to an overall gain of peak horsepower, 24 horsepower, and 30 foot-pounds of torque. For this reason, we are going to ship the airboxes sealed with the ability to be cut open should you choose to install the TRD snorkel. So what we've done is we've designed our airbox with the TRD snorkel in mind. So if you ever wanna go off-roading, you wanna upgrade your truck to uh, allow for the TRD snorkel, this port will work with the factory TRD system. So why did we do the TRD snorkel opening? Um, simply put, we wanted to see what would happen if we could increase the air volume even further. Uh, we immediately saw gains by increasing the air volume as much as we could and maximizing this space as much as possible on the intake side, but we wanted to see if we pulled even more air, could we get even more gains. With the snorkel port opened, we did see a slight bump in initial horsepower and torque, but it then declined to be about the same as factory at the peak RPM. After 3,800 RPM, the power starts to decrease and peak horsepower drops back down to factory output. So what we're gonna recommend is that we're gonna ship this airbox to you with this sealed. And we're not gonna recommend that you open this unless you run a proper snorkel. If you're gonna connect this to the TRD snorkel or an aftermarket snorkel that uses that same TRD teardrop shape, then we're gonna recommend opening that up for you. If you're not gonna be running a snorkel, we do not recommend cutting this open. That increased temperature is going to hurt your overall power and performance. Simply, what this tells us is that this vehicle's under aspirated from the factory. We need to be able to get more air going into that turbo. The purpose of today's video is only talking about the airbox. We have not yet started talking about the intake tube or the testing or anything that we worked on for that. And we're gonna get into that in a later video as we get a little closer to production. We just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a behind the scenes as to what's gone on here at Stillen, tell you a little bit about all the work and engineering that we've done. As I say, more than 100 dyno poles tested on three different vehicles. 
We're now, I think, on prototype number 10 or 12. Uh, so we've got a lot of different configurations that we've tested, and we're very, very proud to bring this to you guys very soon. We hope that this video was educational for you and informative. If you have any questions that we did not cover in today's video, please feel free to drop a comment. We'll be happy to answer them in future videos. Otherwise, make sure you like and subscribe and share this video with your other Toyota Tacoma owners who would find this interesting as well. We're putting a lot of time and energy into the 2024 Toyota Tacoma, and we hope that you enjoy all the content and products that we're coming up with for this fantastic platform. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.